Hi guys, Bobby from BrewHardware.com here, and this video uh, was on my to-do list for a while. Over the past year or so, I've gotten a lot of questions from potential customers asking, are the sight glasses safe to use on a boil kettle or will the polycarbonate tubing melt? Okay, I get that question a lot. Um, let's talk a little bit about polycarbonate. Um, it's really the most heat tolerant plastic that also remains crystal clear. So, um, you know, there are higher heat tolerant plastics out there, but none of them are this clear. Okay, so this is really the best of both worlds. Um, there's really no other plastic to substitute that can take higher temperatures than this. Um, but let's talk about the usable temperatures. The long-term safe temperature range or max temp for these uh, tubes are around 225 to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, you could hit temperatures in that range consistently and there won't be any long-term damage to the tubing or, or any, any problems with clarity. Um, the next temperature you want to think about is around 300 degrees Fahrenheit. That's where this tubing will start to soften a little bit. Uh, if you were riding just above 300 degrees, you could probably apply enough pressure to get this to bend and stay that way uh, while it was that temperature. Um, but for the most part, if it hit 300 occasionally and wasn't bent or disturbed, it would still be okay and uh, it wouldn't be damaged over, over time. Uh, it's when you start creeping up over that temperature, while it's um, probably four to 500 degrees Fahrenheit is where it really starts becoming soft and, and very elastic. Um, and above 500, it would, be, it would probably be, be high enough that the tube would actually just start slump, slumping down uh, and slide right out of the eye bolt support and dump your wort all over the floor. So um, certainly we don't want to get anywhere near 500 degrees Fahrenheit. But overall, that's pretty good for a plastic. Um, but you know, if you've got a kettle and a burner combination where you already know that you've got tons of heat coming up off the sides of that kettle, uh, even flame, I've seen flames licking up the sides a few inches uh, up the kettle wall. And in that case, you really, um, you can't just install the sight glass in that situation without taking some precautions first. So one of the first things you can do is just look at your kettle if you've been using it for a while and look at the handle of your ball valve. Most of them come with a vinyl wrap and if it's already melted to some degree or completely burned off, you've probably got an overheating situation with flames licking up the sides of that kettle. Um, that way you already know that if you're going to put a sight glass on that kettle and continue to use the burner that way, that you're going to have to take some precautions. Um, but if you don't already have a kettle set up and you're setting it up for the first time, I always recommend, and in fact I include a slip of paper that highlights this warning, that before you use it to boil wort or use it for a batch for the first time, you should do a test run with uh, just plain water in the kettle. Bring it up to a boil, and as it's boiling, grab a uh, thermometer, like an instant read uh, kitchen thermometer. Most brewers have something like this, and if you don't already, I recommend it. But as you're boiling with the flame on full, full blast that you would normally use, stick the probe uh, right underneath the fitting, whether it's the T or the elbow fitting, and just hold it there for about 60 seconds and then check the temperature. If you're running say 200 to 225 or somewhere in that area, you're completely fine. You'll never have any trouble with that situation. Uh, as you start getting over 225, what happens is the fitting itself becomes a miniature boil kettle and you'll end up with uh, bubbles forming in the tube. In fact, in some cases, if it gets hot enough, you'll start spurting the liquid out of the tubing. Uh, that's relatively a minor inconvenience uh, as opposed to a total meltdown and, and failure of the tubing. So those are the temperatures that I'm really more concerned about. If you're measuring, say, 300 or more at the bottom of this uh, fitting, you're really going to want to take some precautions. And I want to show you how to make your own heat shield uh, very inexpensively and relatively simply with you know tools that you probably already have. All right, so we're going to talk about um, some really easy and cheap ways of going about this and a little bit more difficult way but potentially nicer solution. Um, so the first thing is is this um, square of aluminum sheet uh, is 
uh, normally comes bent like this. It's called aluminum step flashing. And it's used with roofing mostly and uh, for making chimneys waterproof and things like that. You can get this at a home center for about 50 cents for this piece. This one is called a three by four by seven inch piece of step flashing and it comes like this, okay? Again, very cheap. Um, you can even pick up a couple of them in case they get nasty and you can replace them. So the first really easy way to go about this is to uh, cut it down at the seam like that so that you have a four inch by seven inch piece. And you could just shove this underneath the pot right between the burner and the, uh, the sight glass assembly, okay? And if it's sticking out a little bit further than the, uh, the dial face there, if you were to uh, test it l just like this, say you were getting 300 degrees Fahrenheit at the bottom of the fitting, just installing this little piece of uh, aluminum flashing here will bring that down about 100 degrees. So you'll probably keep it under 200 degrees at that point. It's pretty impressive what you know a 40 cent piece of aluminum can do. Um, the only downside is that you have to keep sticking this in there every time you move the pot or you set it up. If you're fine with that, don't do anything else. Just shove this in here or if you have another piece of scrap metal laying around, it could be galvanized uh, sheet metal or um, piece of stainless, whatever you've got uh, scrap, you could just shove it in here. But I want to show you how to make something a little bit more elegant that would mimic what I would ultimately like to provide in the kits. Now I've got the uh, three inch wide piece that I cut off and I made up this template. Uh, I drew this up in uh, Google SketchUp and um, I can email you this file uh, or as a PDF or something like that and you could print it out so that you could build one of these yourself. So I put the template, I cut out the template, the outside uh, lines, and I taped it here and here down to the aluminum. And the thing that is probably the most difficult to cut out is this star pattern here, but it's sort of key to the clean design that I was hoping to get out of this. Uh, it's like an inside diameter of about a half inch and then uh, the points go out about seven eighths of an inch. Um, one of the ways I'm thinking about going, I don't know if it's going to work, is to use this uh, utility knife and carefully make all of the um, short cuts. Um, I can imagine if you back this with some uh, wood, you could also probably use a spade bit in the center here to go out to the uh, half inch mark. And then you could either use the shears or the, the razor to, uh, to cut the rest of this. Well, let me just see how this works out. Obviously you have to be careful not to cut yourself. Okay, so the most important thing is that I got all of the lines scored into the aluminum at this point, and I'm gonna do a similar thing at these two lines right here. These are separated by about a quarter inch, and right at the edges, I'm going to just put a, a little score so that I know where those lines are. I'm not trying to cut through, I just wanted to put a, a little scratch there. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out the, the curved shapes. And again, the kitchen shears do a, a real nice job of this. Uh, some heavy scissors would probably be able to do it as well. And be careful with these scraps, They're, the cut edges are really sharp. So now this falls off. So this is the basic shape we're looking for. I wasn't able to get through with the first pass. I know I'm scoring over here, but um, I, I'm gonna have to spend a little bit more time going through this. After struggling with this for a little while, I did notice that you can almost chop through the aluminum um, if you use a, a softer backing surface here. I'm using a cutting pad um, meant for arts and crafts, um, but you could probably use some um, plywood or card, hard cardboard. And if you just put the blade right on the line where you need to cut, you can sort of just rock the blade down through it. And you're gonna wanna do that for every one of these. Not the easiest part of this project, but it's bearable. So the next thing we want to do is to form some bends. Okay, so both sides are about the same, so it really doesn't matter which direction we bend this in. But 
what I want to do is for the the top mark that we made closest to this hole I want to transfer the mark to the back and you could do this with a pencil as well I'm just uh, going to score it line it up here and this one is essentially where this taper begins for the most part okay so now that I have that transfer to the back I'm going to put my straight edge across those lines you could do this with a piece of wood or any other kind of ruler grip both pieces together and just bend it back okay so that's about a, uh, a 90 degree bend right there And the next thing we're going to do is you're going to have to hang this off the edge of a table but on the other side you want to put your straight edge on the second line again that's about a quarter inch away and this is so thin that you could really do this pretty easily um, I'm trying to make it as nice as possible but you can see how that looks okay so that's really what I was going for um, still you could see that this this flap is still horizontal while well, this remains vertical. All right, the last thing you need to do is um, bend these triangular tabs outward. Uh, I should say, if you've got the tab, the, the flap here, you want to bend those triangles in uh, towards this side. But you can see why, the, why you make those tabs. You want it to be able to fold and create a nice tight pressure fit here if you were to just cut a hole, it would sort of just flop around and, and uh, hang on there. And it's a nice uh, snug fit, and that's exactly what you want. All right? You just make sure that the tabs aren't overhanging this in any way, and you go ahead and put it back in together. Now, the way this is designed is it doesn't interfere with the gasket at all. We can make this straight. Now this is just a broken thermometer. Um, don't pay any mind to that. Um, but ultimately, the point is you have this heat shield now. Any heat that comes up will be diverted around the tubing uh, and also around the face of the